With Pokemon Scarlet and Violet being just around the corner, I wanted to make a video talking about some of the big changes coming to the game. There may be spoilers, but this isn't really info that you can't already find on YouTube. It is going to be fairly in-depth, so if you just want to keep everything a surprise for yourself, you can just click off this video. You don't even have to hit that subscribe button. We can just pretend like this never happened. But if you are sticking around, let's just get right into it. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the open world concept. This definitely isn't new information, but I think that they've teased us enough about this concept. So now that this game is going to be officially open world, this comes with a lot of possibilities that you probably wouldn't have had in previous titles. A big thing is that you're not going to have all those random NPCs blocking your path because a big fire just broke out and this isn't going to clear up until your fifth badge. I just really like all the freedom that you're going to have in this game. You're going to be able to pick and choose what you want to do and when you want to do it. Something to know from this as well is that there's been an update to how you initiate trainer battles. Trainers will no longer stop you in their sights the minute that they see you. Instead, you'll need to interact with them to engage in battle. So now it's going to be entirely up to you whether or not you want to participate in a battle. To me, this makes sense to have, especially in an open world setting. Even if this wasn't implemented in the game, either way, you could still avoid these trainer battles if you wanted to, right? Like there's a big open area, so you don't really have to do the battle anyways. This next bit, I'm actually pretty excited about. So typically in Pokemon games, you had that one set story path with a few side missions that would sometimes come in here and there. But in this game, you're going to have three story paths that you can pick and choose at any point. We have Victory Road, Path of Legends, and Starfall Street. The great thing about these three paths is that there's going to be so much more to experience in the game. It's not just about getting your badges. If you remember in Sword and Shield, it seemed like all the more interesting parts of the story always seemed to happen off screen. Like there was a moment where Pokemon were suddenly Dynamaxing and you would rush over and try to stop them. And in that moment, you're excited and you're like, hell yeah, I want to do that. But then Leon shows up and he's like, no, no, let the champion deal with it. And it's like, okay, f*** you, Leon. Because this was something that happened constantly. Anything remotely interesting happening in the game story would just get cut off by one of the characters. So in this case, you're actually going to have a lot more to experience. Victory Road is the traditional story path that you're used to. You're going to set out to defeat the gym leaders of the region and ultimately become the regional champion. But what's actually really cool about this is that you can challenge any of the eight gym leaders at any time. So let's just say that you're exploring the world and you end up at the last gym. You can always challenge that one first if you want to. The second path is Path of Legends, which will see you hunting down Rare Herba Mystica. These herbs are guarded by Titan Pokemon. When I first saw this, the first thing that it came to mind was Alpha Pokemon. But it is going to be a little bit different, so you're going to be hunting down these massive Pokemon, and it looks more like a boss battle than anything else. I am curious to see how long these new paths are going to be. Hopefully you get a decent amount of content, and it's not just like three of them, and you can get this all done in an hour. The last path is Starfall Street, where you get to challenge Gen 9's villainous team in battle. From what was shown in the demo, you can see that they form a bunch of bases around Aldea, and you get to challenge them in battle, but it looks like there's going to be hordes of Pokemon that you need to defeat in a certain amount of time using an auto battle feature. And when I say that out loud, it doesn't sound that fun, but it's actually not that bad. And we're going to cover this more in just a little bit. For me, this might be the first path that I start, just because I'm curious to see the overall story with Team Star. I've said this before, but the more recent villains of the series really haven't hit the mark for me. They don't really give off that villainous vibe like you might get from Team Rocket, for example. But if there's an entire path dedicated to them, I would imagine that this would be at least somewhat entertaining. Next, the camping feature is returning, but now it's known as picnics. So instead of curry, you can make sandwiches. But they also added bathing your Pokemon to the game. I hope there are real pigs in this universe, otherwise I feel really bad for LeChonk. I'm thinking that I need to catch one to save him from being eaten, or as an emergency food supply. But the good thing about this feature is that it's not just about the power of friendship, but you actually get perks for doing this. Just to give a few examples, you can give your Pokemon extra experience for a short period of time, raise the encounter rate of a type of Pokemon, or increase your ability to catch that specific type. So love it or hate it, you're probably going to end up doing this quite a bit just for the perks. Now, I have a love-hate for the whole picnic feature. On one hand, it's cool that you could do things with your Pokemon other than battle, but in Sword and Shield, it wasn't super fun to do either. Like, at first, it was really cool, but after doing it a few times, it just kind of got dull. I don't know if anybody else had this problem, but mine was always super buggy. Like, I would call a Pokemon over, and there'd be, like, another one that's just having a nap right in between us, and it couldn't figure out how to get around it. So I just kind of sat there for five minutes going, like, so... What now? Also, I hope that if you build a strong friendship with your Pokemon, 
they're going to fix the text that pops up in battle. Just because sometimes it's a little weird. Like you catch a Pokemon that's going on a rampage, attacking anything that moves like a real badass. And then during battles after catching it, it's like this Pokemon has taken damage and might cry. Like no, five minutes ago, it was just trying to destroy the world. It just doesn't fit certain Pokemon. Or maybe I'm just nitpicking, I don't know. Last thing I wanted to cover about picnics is a little different, depending on your perspective, I guess. Based on some of the videos from YouTubers that got early access to the game, it looks like the whole daycare system is not making its return in Scarlet and Violet. Now, I definitely wasn't one of those lucky few. I'm 95% sure that Nintendo just laughed when they saw my email, but from what they were saying, the system is actually kind of cool. The way that you get eggs is through picnics, which when I first saw this, I thought it was kind of weird, only because I don't think I've ever heard anyone say, you know what sucks most about Pokemon games? Daycare. Hate it. But I do see the convenience in not having to go back and forth to daycare, but I don't know, I think we just have to wait and see how this all works before we can really judge whether or not we like this system. Next on the list is multiplayer. This is honestly such a great feature that they're finally adding to the game, and if I had friends, I think I'd be a little more excited about this, but you're going to be able to play Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in four-player multiplayer. Along with the series staples like trading and battling, you're going to be able to explore the various locations of the region in these games with other players. You can discover new Pokemon and explore unfamiliar areas with your friends and family. I think this opens up the doors to a lot of possibilities, especially with content on YouTube. The next feature is the Let's Go command. Now, I kind of mentioned this earlier when we were talking about the Starfall Street story, but how this works is you can send out your lead Pokemon out into the wild with this command. This instruction sends the Pokemon in the front of the team towards the nearest Pokemon and lets them take them on in battle without you getting involved. I don't know if this is just specifically for the Starfall Street challenges, but when you look at some of the demo footage, you can see that they send out like three at a time. Again, it could be that this is just only for the challenge, but I think it would be super weird if you could send out any more than that. Like, I think that would get a little hectic sending out your entire team just to destroy every Pokemon that moves. This feature can also be used to pick up items on the field as well, so it's not just about battling. Now, I've seen some articles where journalists have talked about how this feature is going to make catching Shiny a nightmare just because you could potentially attack that Pokemon and defeat it. Like, the Pokemon can't distinguish regular Pokemon from Shiny, but I feel like if I do that and lose my Shiny, that one's on me, you know? Like, I have all the power in this situation, so me personally, I don't really think this is going to be an issue. This feature can be great too if you're just out exploring the world and you don't want to go in and out of battle. You can just send out a Pokemon to strike one down and keep on going. You also don't gain as much XP by doing this, so at least they tried to balance this out a little. Like, if you're getting full XP, I feel like this would make a lot of players lazy. Just because you don't even have to do anything to level up your Pokemon. I mean, you could still kind of do that, but you just have to do that much more to actually level up. On one hand, this feature can make battles less engaging, but at the same time, you don't have to use this. There's definitely going to be situations where you might want to use this, and times where you want to stick to that traditional approach to battle. Not a perfect system, but I definitely think I'm going to be making use of this. Moving on from battle, we have photo mode. Pokemon's getting its own dedicated photo mode. You're no longer restricted to taking snaps and set locations or using the Switch's screenshot function. If I'm being honest, I don't think I'm ever going to use this feature. I've never really been a fan of taking pictures in games unless there's some sort of incentive. Then I'm totally down. Otherwise, this camera is just going to collect dust. Next, we definitely need to talk about terrestrializing. Generally speaking, newer games tend to have this gimmick that's unique to each region. Like Galar had Dynamaxing and Paldea is going to have terrestrializing. At first, I wasn't a huge fan of this. I don't know. I, I, I wasn't particularly fond of the whole crystal thing, but the concept itself is actually pretty cool. Pokemon that you catch are going to have different terror types, and this remains unactive until you terrestrialize. So if you catch a bunch of Pikachu, they could all potentially end up with different terror types, like water or flying. With this change as well, instead of Pikachu being weak to say ground type moves, depending on your terror type, when you terrestrialize, your weakness can change with it. But the interesting part about this as well is that if you have a Thunder Terror type Pikachu and you use a Thunder attack, you gain an even greater attack bonus. Personally, despite the attack advantage, if I have the option to get a Ghost Terror type Eevee, I think I would pick that over your standard typing, but maybe that's just me. What I like about this is that you have different things to consider when you're forming a team in the game. You don't necessarily have to keep the same type and Terror type. You could experiment and get like Fire or Flying, just as an example. And this is going to be pretty cool to see when you're facing off against other players, because depending on your designated terrestrializing Pokemon, your opponent's going to have no idea what type you're going to have, and the same goes for your opponent. In order to terrestrialize, you're going to need a Terra Orb, and you can only do this once per battle, but when you do terrestrialize and the battle finishes, you need to charge your Terra Orb, which can be done through a Pokemon Center, 
or you can find shining crystals scattered around many locations throughout the region. Now, if you hated raid battles in Sword and Shield, great news because raid battles are returning in Scarlet and Violet, but they are actually going to be a little bit better than they were before. This is going to be the place where you're going to find the more rare terror types. And how you find these are going to be pretty simple. There's going to be shining crystals on the map, but what's cool is that the color of the crystal determines what terror type the Pokemon will be. So if you're looking for a fire terror type, you just need to find the red crystals, which is great because I think that might frustrate people a little bit if this was always random, especially if you're looking for a specific terror type. There are some changes to the battles as well, like a set time that you have to defeat a terrestrialized Pokemon, but my favorite part is that you're going to be able to seamlessly make your moves in battle as opposed to waiting until everyone's turn is complete. This is definitely a welcome change because sometimes a raid battle felt like it went on and on forever, but without anything really interesting happening. Majority of the time is spent just waiting for your own turn. You're also going to be in a group with three other trainers, which will be either real people or if you're antisocial like me, you can use the AIs. I hope they improve on the AI system because uh, a lot of the times it kind of sucked. They always did the most helpful things, like recover everybody's health even though it's already full. That kind of useful. The last thing I wanted to mention was the character customization. There's quite a bit of changes to this mechanic, so the first thing is that the hairstyles on the face of the character isn't gender locked. So if you're a guy and you want your character to have long hair, you can now do that. And it's kind of crazy that this took so long for them to do. There's also going to be a ton of options in this. I like that because you can really make the trainer that you want to. It's not just like six options and you hate seven of them. One thing that's new to trainer customization is eye shape. You've been able to change your eye color for a few games now, but in Scarlet and Violet, you can give your eyes a more angular look or you can make them rounder, just to name a couple of examples. Alrighty, everybody, that's going to cut it for this video. Let me know your thoughts on some of the new features in the game in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.